Well, surgical decision making, uh, as everyone knows, is really one of the most, if not the most critical part of spine surgery. For me, it starts obviously in the clinic and speaking with patients and, and finding out what their primary complaints are, the distribution of their pain, what kinds of activities they feel limited or not able to do. And then having really a comprehensive set of, of imaging is critical. Um, all of my patients have uh, MRI scan and CT scan. Uh, I also think, um, and all my partners in my practice know the importance of getting full length um, standing total spine x-rays on all of our patients to be able to measure all the critical spinal pelvic parameters. And lastly, having, um, having the skill set that includes both uh, open surgery as well as minimally invasive options and knowing the limitations of both, how much correction, how much indirect decompression can you get from, uh, from minimally invasive options, whether, whether it's anterior, lateral, or all posterior based operations. Um, I think those are, those are very, very critical when it comes to the objective side of surgical decision-making. And obviously the last thing is uh, engaging in a shared decision-making um, component with the patient, finding out what their goals are, what their philosophy is when it comes to lumbar fusion um, and extent of fusion. Um, I think that those are critical decisions to make so that uh, both the surgeon and, uh, and the patient are happy with the, with the ultimate plan and the result. Of, of the surgery. You know, one surgery doesn't fit all. As I tell our fellows, you need to know every technique and approach in order to choose the right surgery for the right patient, not the other way around. The key is to understand what are the goals of surgery for each particular patient. There's a case example that I have here uh, with my partners that offered multiple differing surgical opinions. He was a 74-year-old uh, man, underwent a uh, multi-level T-lift. He developed pseudarthrosis. He had worsening back pain and buttock pain. And my partners actually recommended big open revision, take out the implants, do a, a pedicle subtraction osteotomy, extend them up to T10. And while there's definitely a role for surgeries like that, and, and patients can do well, uh, properly selected, doing that type of surgery, I thought, you know, can I do less? for this older, sicker patient. So I, in short, did a, a minimally invasive uh, approach to expose the bottom of the construct, did a hyperlordotic lateral A-lift at L5-S1, locked the screws back down in the back, single position, did an X-lift ACR at the top at L1-2, and then put a decade plate with four screws, and the patient did phenomenally well. He was up walking the evening of surgery, he was discharged on post doctor day number three. I now have seen him, he's over a year out and he's done exceptionally well. He's done so well uh, for an older, sicker guy who probably wouldn't have done as well with a pedicle subtraction osteotomy, you know, and, and couldn't be happier at this point. So in my practice, which again involves quite a bit of complicated revision surgery and deformity surgery, I really do a mixture of traditional open techniques and less invasive surgery. And I really customize the surgery that I offer a patient based on all the different details of what it is that I'm trying to accomplish and what do they need. And it can get very complicated. I mean, you really have to look at, can I achieve my goals with indirect decompression or do they really require a direct decompression and where, what kind? And uh, what's their bone density? I may be a little keen to do more of a large inner body procedure like an X-lift or an A-lift with a bigger cage. If I'm concerned they have a little osteopenia, if they have severe osteoporosis, then I don't wanna do any inner body procedure. So there's a whole spectrum and that's the osteoporosis factor is just one issue. I also look at their vascular anatomy, their medical history, their biology in general, what's their potential to heal? Do I want to use a biologic uh, with an inner body that works really well so that I can optimize their fusion success because maybe what they're needing from me is a heroic salvage of a disaster. And if it doesn't work, I got nothing else I can do for them. I might be a little more aggressive in that situation, so on and so forth. So in the course of a year's time, I will do 
and L45 degenerative spondylolisthesis, simple everyday kind of problem that any spine surgeon sees, surgically treat that with literally just about every technique that I just described. Some of them get an a lift and perk screws. Some of them get an, an x lift and perk screws. Some of them get an x lift and an open laminectomy and open screws. Some of them get a T-lift. Some of them get, get a uh, minimally invasive T-lift. And it really just depends on all these zillions of factors in terms of what do I think is best for them approach-wise and it's gonna get my goals accomplished and so forth. So all of these things are still part of my practice. And my attitude is, I don't think it's right to say, well, I'm gonna be a master of one technique and everyone needs to fit into that because that's what I do. That doesn't make sense. I think the, the reality of life here is that there are some situations where you lay out all these options and one of them will clearly be the best option. So I think the right mindset is be versatile and offer the patient what is the most appropriate operation for their situation and problem, weighing all of these factors. But again, I also acknowledge that some situations it's dealer's choice, or there might be two or three that are perfectly acceptable. When it comes to selecting the right procedure for the right patient, I think it's really important for any surgeon to uh, you know, have a lot of possible techniques or ways of treating a certain problem. Uh, we know that all patients are different. They may have uh, different medical issues, uh, different pathology that needs to be addressed. So it's really important to not only, uh, you know, I, I tell my residents and fellows, it's, it's important to not just treat the picture, but to treat the patient as a whole. So you really wanna get to know that patient, know what their pathology is, know where their symptoms are coming from, know what their goals are with surgery. And that really will help guide me to decide what might be the best procedure for that patient. Uh, you know, sometimes it is a is it is a bigger open surgery, but oftentimes I will try to do uh, what I can to do a less invasive procedure for someone, and that may be a lot of different options with less invasive surgery for, with lumbar fusion, for example. It could be an X lift, it could be a midline cortical uh, procedure, it could be an MIST lift, um, and I think it's so important for surgeons to not kind of get stuck in this narrow rabbit hole of, of doing one procedure for every patient. So you really wanna have a lot of, um, you know, tricks up your sleeve, so to speak, to help uh, address what the, those patient needs are. Uh, and if you align that with the patient goals and you really are able to work as a team with the patient, I think that just improves their outcome overall.